the fire, source of light and heat, symbol of death and destruction, but also of purification and rebirth. Revered as a deity and feared for its destructive force, the fire with its burning flames burns and devours everything it encounters along its path, erasing forever what has been built over time, reducing every trace of past existence to a pile of ashes. Likewise, cremation uses the transformative power of fire to reduce the body to ashes, thus marking the end of earthly life and depending on one's beliefs, the beginning of a new existence. Cremation is a very ancient practice, dating back to prehistoric times, and which over the millennia has spread to different civilizations and religions, establishing itself as an alternative to traditional burial. But how does the cremation of a body work in detail? Let's go and see it. Phase 1. Documentation. The application to obtain authorization for cremation of the body must be submitted to the civil status officer of the municipality where the death occurred, attaching a series of documents. Among these, we find the will of the deceased to be cremated, expressed through a testamentary disposition or through a previous registration with a legally recognized cremation association. In the absence of a clear will expressed by the deceased during his lifetime, to resort to cremation, the will expressed by the spouse is necessary, or in the absence of the latter, by the absolute majority of the closest relatives of the same degree. The request for cremation must also be accompanied by the certificate from the necropsy doctor, which excludes the suspicion of death due to a crime or the authorization from the judicial authority. And finally, a copy of the applicant's valid identity document must be attached. Once all the documentation presented has been examined and accepted, the actual cremation process can begin, which usually takes place after the funeral or memorial ceremony. Phase 2 Preparation of the Body The preparation of the body for cremation consists of removing those personal objects worn by the deceased that are to be kept as a memento, such as watches, rings, and necklaces. Any metal object and any medical devices are also removed, such as pacemakers, hearing aids, and in the case of particular prostheses, electro-powered by radionuclides. This is because the high temperatures reached in the crematorium oven can cause these devices to explode, generating explosions capable of damaging the crematory systems. The removal of these medical devices, however, has generally already been carried out previously by the medical examiner of the hospital facility where the body was located or by authorized medical personnel. Once the removal of personal objects and any medical devices is completed, the body is dressed, which can be worn in the same clothes chosen for the funeral or those indicated by the deceased's family. It can be a garment that has no emotional connection with the deceased, as it will be destroyed by the flames, or a garment dear to him, so as to see and remember him for the last time, with his favorite clothing. Phase 3. Placement of the body in the coffin. Once the preparation of the body is complete, it is placed inside the coffin that the family has previously chosen. The coffins chosen for cremation are generally made of natural wood, without metal parts, such as handles and screws, and must not be treated with paints or chemical materials, as they would release toxic and dangerous fumes during combustion in the crematorium oven. Finally, an identification plate made of refractory material is attached to the coffin, therefore heat-resistant. This ensures that the ashes can always be correctly attributed to the deceased, eliminating the risk of errors or confusion of persons during the entire process.
Phase 4 Crematorium Oven At this point, the coffin is moved from the preparation room to the room where the crematorium oven is located. In modern plants, through an automated mechanical system, operated remotely by the operator, the coffin advances along a system of tracks or rollers that guide it to the entrance of the crematorium oven. It is a structure formed by two overlapping chambers, an upper or primary one and a lower or secondary one. These are separated by a grid made of refractory material capable of resisting high temperatures for long periods without reacting chemically with the materials it comes into contact with. Both chambers are lined with refractory bricks designed to resist the combustion of the coffin, which can occur by heating the walls of the oven using electric resistors or gas burners or by direct flame. Returning to the cremation process, the upper chamber is preheated, and once the desired temperature is reached, the coffin is ready to be inserted. Through an automated or manual opening system, the door that closes the crematorium oven opens in order to insert the coffin inside. At this point, once the door is hermetically closed, equipped with safety mechanisms that prevent accidental opening during the operation of the oven, the cremation process officially begins. The temperatures reached inside the chambers rise up to 1652 to 1832 degrees Fahrenheit, and thanks to a ventilation system, air is continuously introduced, and therefore oxygen, to feed the combustion until the cremation is completed. At the same time, another suction system takes care of removing the fumes and gases produced by the combustion, sending them to a special fume filtration system in order to reduce harmful emissions to values compatible with those established by environmental regulations. The secondary chamber then takes care of burning the organic materials released from the primary chamber to reduce air pollution and eliminate the emission of odors and smoke. The duration of cremation varies greatly, as it depends on the temperature of the oven, the type of coffin, but above all on the height and body weight of the deceased. On average, cremation varies between 1.5 hours and 3 hours, during which the oven operator can monitor the entire process through a special window positioned on the oven, or in more modern systems, thanks to very precise technological equipment, such as sensors and digital devices. Phase 5. Cooling. Once the combustion phase is over, what remains inside the crematorium oven is a pile of bone fragments and ashes from the coffin, as well as any metal parts, such as hinges, prostheses, surgical screws, implants, or dental crowns of the deceased. These remains are first cooled and then removed from the chamber using special brushes, rakes, and other equipment. They are then transferred to a refractory container underneath the oven for further cooling, awaiting the next phase. Phase 6. Sieving. Once the cooling phase is completed, the operator proceeds to a careful visual inspection of the cremation remains and, if present, removes any metal bodies. In some cases, magnets are used to facilitate the separation of these materials from the bone fragments. At this point, the cremation remains just examined are placed on a vibrating sieve, a special machine that through the action of a vibrating motor, separates the bone fragments from the finer dust, making them pass through the holes of the sieve. In this way, only the bones of the deceased who has just been cremated will remain on the surface, while the finer dust will settle on the bottom of the sieve, consisting mostly of the ashes formed by the combustion of the coffin. Phase 7. Pulverization and Delivery of Ashes The bone fragments are ready to be inserted into the cremulator a specially designed machine, which uses a series of blades and rotating discs to crush the bone remains. 
This results in a fine and homogeneous powder, which effectively represents the ashes of the deceased. At this point, they are collected in a special cinerary urn, on which a plaque is placed that must clearly and precisely report the personal data of the deceased, the date of death, and the date of cremation. Urn that must be sealed in order to avoid accidental dispersion of the ashes and to guarantee their integrity once delivered to the family of the deceased. It is good to remember that the quantity of ashes produced by the cremation of a human body varies greatly from person to person, but in general, in the case of an adult it is equal to about 3 to 4 percent of his body weight. In the case of a child, however, this percentage drops to around 2 to 3 percent, and up to 1 percent in the case of a fetus. The ashes can be kept in special cinerary cells, located inside a cemetery, or kept in one's home, or alternatively, they can be dispersed in nature. In this case, it is possible to do so only in particular areas identified by the competent municipality and in compliance with the legislation in force at the time of the event. In conclusion, we have seen how cremation is a rather complex procedure, which follows a series of very specific phases. It is therefore essential to rely on a trusted funeral company to ensure that the entire process takes place in compliance with current regulations, but above all with the dignity and memory of the deceased. Cremation, therefore, represents a valid alternative to traditional burial, and in fact is becoming increasingly popular throughout the world. In the next videos instead, which as soon as they are available you will find by clicking here above, we will see what happens to the human body after death and once buried in the coffin.